Hello everyone, my name is Sam and I am the host of the Fandom Made Podcast. I will be interviewing different content creators that devote hundreds of hours of their time to entertaining us, the fans. These content creators are the backbone of a fandom. We will explore the different perspectives found in different fandoms and how fandoms affect our lives, how they evolve, the patterns within them, and their positives and negatives. I hope you enjoy the podcast, and make sure to let me know if you want to hear more. Thank you. It is started. You are you are on uh, you are on record. So officially, anything you say can and will be held against you in a court of law. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Well, my name's all right. So I'm starting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure if you were so that. why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? All right, uh, my name's Ingrid, and I go around the internet by the handle of Ingthing. I am a hobbyist artist, and right now I basically draw a lot of fan art for Yuri on Ice. <laughs> Is that all you do? Do you do other things too? <laughs> <laughs> um... I, mean, I, I, I know you fic. do stuff for other I, uh, fandoms. I do. Um, I write fic. Um, my last fan, my last big fandom was Ace Attorney. Um, but I've basically only been in a few major fandoms. I mean, Haikyuu is one, I guess. I mean, but, that's how I met you was through Haikyuu stuff. I know. Stuff. <laughs> I know. So... But um, it was a shorter phase, I think, yeah. than uh, the other two. Yeah, and then uh, Yuri on Ice came out and like totally consumed everybody's lives. Oh yeah, so. oh yeah. I'm I'm still stuck. A lot, a lot of people <laughs> fell into that hole. That's for sure. Oh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the first. Do I do I just go into the, the next? <laughs> yeah, one, I can. I can. We can establish that. Yeah. Um, if you, yeah. You can ask them. Okay. Um. So just to get the ball rolling here. Um, what was the first fandom that you were a part of, and what did you learn from being in that fandom? The first fandom I was a part of was probably, um, I pro I'm probably missing a fandom, but it's probably the Harvest Moon fandom. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is a, a farming game, um, and back then it was, I played Harvest Moon DS Cute, which is the, which is Harvest Moon, except the protag is, uh, is a girl um right. and that was like both that was kind of my first exposure to making and posting things online mm -hmm. um i definitely drew art for it i definitely that was actually my first long fic um my first chapter fic i ever wrote was for harvest moon how long ago and was I, that <laughs> i was uh I was twelve. <laughs> oh my I'm god, good. that's a so really it was, long time ago. It was like eight eight years ago. Yeah, wow. Yeah, um, time flies. <laughs> um I I think what I learned most from that experience was just um <laughs> learning how to be like how to put things on the internet, basically. And I've been doing that ever since, even though like I've been using the same username. <laughs> Yeah. For a very long time, actually, since then. Uh -huh. So it's, um, there's a lot of history of this username on the internet. <laughs> and, um, I'm glad that people don't often dredge it up because there's some really bad stuff back there. <laughs> yeah. Some stuff that you're not, uh, not too proud of. No, um, but that was my fir first and only long fake for the longest time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. your your handle has kind of I, I actually kind of find that surprising that you picked a username when you were twelve and you've like stuck know, with it because it always it always <laughs> seems like people change it like yeah oh my God. okay when I me... was twelve oh. let, let's just compare <laughs> yeah, me yeah. to you when I was twelve I was sitting on my couch playing Call of Duty on the PlayStation Three so mm. that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, w I didn't even know what a fandom was at that point. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a difference there. Yeah, I think I got, I got, um, I wouldn't say that my exposure to fandom was early because, um, 
I think just that there's there's always a learning curve when um, you're first exposed to a computer and um, you search things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then you're like, hey, actually, I can be part of this too. And then you have to like start making a like a a persona for yourself online. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I also I, I know that like so many people um in that in my of my generation kind of like fluctuate between names, um, have names they're not proud of, emails that they're not very fond of anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but my first email was like Ingrid U ten. <laughs> where where other people were going like xx goth girl like xx or whatever so i yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean i've stuck i've stuck with the, my original email as well it's wingman sam 77 <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah i've stuck with Amazing. that like i don't yeah. find it that embarrassing so i just keep using it yeah it's not it's not uh, like yeah <laughs> I mean, I was... Uh, there, there are worse usernames. <laughs> yes, there are definitely worse usernames. Just mm-hmm. ask just ask uh, Alyssa about that. Oh, um, yeah, Alyssa. <laughs> with her warrior cats yeah. OC name. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I was super self-conscious of it for a while. Like, I mm. think it was middle school, because middle school is a time where you're... Middle school is always terrible. With your self... Uh, your uh what what is it uh self-esteem is super low and you're mm-hmm. always caring about mm-hmm. what other people like perceive you as so yeah, yeah. i made another email that was less like <laughs> i mean we man yeah. sam is not very embarrassing but of course it's not it's just like interesting so. uh-huh. it's you'd raise an eyebrow okay it's not wingman in the sense of like helping another guy get like a significant it's, it's other it's wingman, wingman as in like the aviation term it's still wingman <laughs> i know it is like i don't even know <laughs> i'm pretty sure my stepdad was the reason why i have that oh username. incredible so he actually flew f-16 jets so oh cool yeah, yeah. Th- that's why that's why he probably <laughs> well, <it's> suggested <laughs> uh-huh so yeah the yeah, first fandoms man it's mm. it's rough my it's first fan. Story. Oh gosh, what was my first fandom? I have to, I have to think about this. Maybe I should have looked over the questions before <laughs> I gave them to Maybe, you. Maybe, but um, um well, I can I can actually talk a little bit about my like. I don't know if Harvest Moon is actually my first fandom now that I think about it, because um that was technically the first one I made things for. Yeah. But my first fandom could easily have been like, um. My first exposure to anime was uh, Tokyo Mew Mew and Mermaid Melody Pitchy Pitchy Pitch, which are like early 2000s um, shoujo animes. Mm -hmm. And they are, they're classics, but uh, they're interesting. (laughs) And I, like, those were the days when I didn't know, like, things beyond maybe like YouTube and like, yeah msn and stuff exactly so it was like those really low quality riffs on youtube oh gosh yeah yeah Dark I, age. I have experience with that it's, mm, it's bad mm, mm. before you yeah. have like money to pay for uh actual services well, money you're actually like wanting to go out and find other sites mm-hmm. i think that's part of like digital literacy is you have to learn how to seek things mm-hmm like yeah. there's a site for that. You don't have to, you know, go to YouTube and yeah, watch somebody's yeah, yeah. like camcorder filming their VCR. Oh yeah. Of this anime. <laughs> <laughs> and then they they don't finish the entire season. Uh huh. That's kind of yeah. like my okay. We can kind of like get into first exposure to anime because obviously, yeah, I don't okay. want this to follow like a set. Uh, that's fine. Outline, just keep, just so. whatever whatever the flow is. Yeah. Um, so, if you're, if you want to talk about that, that is, because I, I feel like that's a little bit interesting, but, uh, I think least... that's basically all I have, because it's been so long. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but I think, I wasn't really a major fan in the sense that I am with anime now. Yeah. Like, those fandoms, 
the first one I can kind of identify as my first major anime fandom mm -hmm. was Blackjack, actually, um, yeah. which is this <laughs> the the anime the original not the original anime but I think the there was a 2004 reboot of the anime yeah um, and I came in like a, a, I think man um, but the original manga was like 1970s oh wow that's super oh nice. yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a story by the creator of, of At Astro Boy, uh, oh, Osamu wow. Tezuka. Yeah. Um, so we're we're talking really retro, um, and it, it's interesting now that I think about it because I don't know what drew me drew me a, a sixth grader to a story about an unlicensed surgeon who charges exorbitant amounts of money to his clients but has like the hands of god <laughs> like that's not the typical kind of story you would expect well, uh, i mean does it have does it have like a super unique art style or maybe you were drawn to just um, how it is drawn because i i feel like i've done that in the past when i was super young where hmm, it would just look cool and then that's why i watch it uh i think my the reason why I got into it is because my school library got it. They got yeah. the first four, four volumes. And at that time, I went to the library a lot. And the I remember distinctly the manga section was like this one shelf in front of the sitting area in the library. Uh -huh. Because that's like, they were trying to entice people to read through comics. Yeah. Um, so I, I prided myself on be, having read everything there. Mm -hmm. and um so before that point i had really only had exposure to shoujo manga yeah um online and um like in print um and then there was that series that came along and it was very different from shoujo manga and anything else i'd been exposed to mm -hmm. so i think that's that was my start with like shonen um media yeah yeah so how is that like a long series or is it like relatively short like and concise um it's actually the format of it is in its first printing was it was a weekly i think it was a weekly series yeah and um aimed at older audiences um because it has quite dark themes yeah and it's i think that it has i don't know there there are 17 um translated volumes in english and okay. each um each volume has i think around 10 stories or 10 chapters yeah. it kind of runs the format of of vignettes um okay instead of a continuous storyline it's kind of just there's a surgeon and here's the places he goes mm -hmm. and the people he treats and the 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 questions of, of morality and justice that he encounters all right yeah yeah that, that sounds kind of interesting yeah um, check it out sometime <laughs> yeah i don't de i definitely should i need to read more manga but i'm just uh, i think I'm that's so a really good one reading. for um it's just very different from what you might see nowadays yeah mm -hmm. I i'm just so bad at reading manga it's just mm. it's super i'm super bad at reading or watching anything so it really, <laughs> oh, same, really same. has to grab me if I oh, yeah. if I'm yeah. gonna watch or read it. So yeah, it's a classic. Yeah. Um, let's see. My first exposure to anime, or at least, hmm, was okay. This is really, really American, but mm -hmm. um, Toonami was my oh, first yes, Toonami. exposure yeah, to Toonami. uh anime and it was mm -hmm. it was naruto and it was bleach of course and it was yeah. um oh bleach was my second show shonen anime i think oh wow that was like my first exposure to shonen anime i don't remember anything about bleach <laughs> <laughs> i actually um i started it when it was already at like episode like 200 something shonen anime man it's yeah it it's is. crazy stuff yeah it's like the gateway drug i only re i remember because toonami would just show the same arcs over and over again <laughs> i just oh, yeah. remember like episode like 20 to like 60 
and when I watch it, I'm like, yeah, I think this that's is the, what I that's the main like art, 10. actually. That yeah. was like the the meat of the story. That was when it was in its prime. It was yeah, it was the so, most interesting and it was yeah really light on the fluff. Yeah, but, so you're really not missing much. Yeah, and honestly, I just gave I just give up. I just gave up on Naruto <laughs> to be yeah. honest, because it just I cannot I cannot keep with something for that long. It's just so mm-hmm. much. Yeah. So yeah, that was my that that, that was my. I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> I didn't participate with anything in like a fandom for that because it was just me in my basement yeah, watching I TV. Think, so. Yeah, I think when it's like actually broadcast on TV, it doesn't promote that kind of like, especially if you're not like used to internet communities, mm-hmm. you don't seek out that kind of interaction. Oh man, I mean, I don't even know when I made the transition to just watching stuff on TV and then like finding out the internet exists and you can look yeah, up it's whatever you want on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And even that kind of changes your like Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, I it, it changes your whole per- perception of I mean, I again, I didn't even know what a fandom was until Oh yeah. Probably I joined Tumblr. Yeah, I think um it was around the time my family started um giving us like our personal desktop computers Uh um like my my brother and i like personal desktop computers that was really when this it started um my like use of the internet because before that point it was kind of just like using it for school assignments when i needed to yeah um and my parents only have one computer in their bedroom so i it's not like i had like constant access to it Uh um and then you get your own computer and everything like goes downhill. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exactly what happened to me pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. you just have we had our gateway desktop computer. It was white. Oh, yeah. Slowly faded to like a yellow over time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> and classic. Then, yeah. Um and then uh yeah, I basically would only use it for like Microsoft Word for school. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, when I moved down to where I, where I am now I got well it wasn't my computer but I used it the most out of anybody because we had multiple mm. computers in the house yeah so then I started using it more and then that's how I got shoved into fandom <laughs> shoved stuff. into yeah I mean more yeah. like sucked but you know yeah you can... like the first internet community that I really joined was DeviantArt or DeviantArt, however you say it. Yeah, DeviantArt um, is how I say and it. Obviously, like, as an artist, that's, like, the first place um, many internet artists have their start. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's the first art site that I ever heard of and made an I account think it on. it was definitely. one of the first, like, solely art-driven sites. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think before that point, you had, like, LiveJournal and Blogger and... People would make their personal blogs yeah. about their art, but mm-hmm. not necessarily um, all the content was based around art. So, yeah, that really segues into my next questions, doesn't it? You're mm-hmm. you're a natural. You're a natural. No, uh... I'm looking at the list of questions. Well, I yeah, I know, to help but you, out. You, you made a perfect segue. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, really, what you do now mainly, what you're known for on the internet is your digital art. Well, yes. sometimes traditional art. But most yeah. of the time, you're drawing Art. on your tablet, right? Am yeah. I right about that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so when did you really, really start? I mean, I would say just art in general. When did you really? I'm saying art weird, aren't I? I'm like going <laughs> <No>. art. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm listening to myself <laughs> talk, and it's weird. It's all right. Um, um, when did you really start getting into art and practicing it like daily? And yeah. Well, I've always loved drawing, um, so I'd have to say I got my start when I was, like, two. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, in terms of, like, actually, like, daily practicing was actually, I think, when I figured out the internet and, like, went on Debian Art, saw all these other great artists, mm-hmm. and then decided, like, yeah, I want to, I wanna, like, get better at this thing. Um, so the first tablet I got was actually, I got it. Um, because I saw that this other artist that who I admired um, was having drawing streams where like there's this thing called um, Takamin Okaki. Um, 
I'm pronouncing this totally terribly. <laughs> but um, Okaki chat. Yeah. Um, and basically, it's a chat room where everyone can draw on the same canvas, and oh, it would wow. be like really like pixely stuff. Like it's still in use today, but um, that was like ages ago. Um, but I got a tablet, um, kind of because like the cool kids were doing digital art. Mm-hmm. So that's um, that's when I started doing digital art, and I've definitely improved. Yeah. <laughs> since since I was like maybe like 13, 14. Um but yeah. Well, I've definitely seen in just the short year that I've known you. It's been a year. Wow. It's been just a year? <laughs> yeah, it's been a year. Wow. We've only known each other for a year. Um uh I've seen in just this year that your your stuff has improved. Oh, thank I, you. I mean, I see that I see that in everybody that I know that draws. They Yeah, you know, it's a it's constant improvement for most artists. Yeah. I mean, you would hope. Yeah, yeah, you would hope. <laughs> it's just the, the that environment of being on the internet and surrounded by other artists is mm-hmm. really helpful for that. Yeah. Because in, in real life, you might not have access to like other artists in the community. Um, and especially not like, there's this thing called like, like I mean, I still have this, but it's like drawing, in, drawing insecurity is much stronger. Um, I feel like when you're isolated, yeah. Actually, not 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 when you're by yourself, like as in in real life. Because up to a certain point, I definitely did not have that drawing insecurity. Yeah. Um, but it's um, when you, it's more inspiring to see people improve and then follow suit than to have um, a small community of artists where progress might not be as fast. Or maybe, yeah, along with that, or maybe the perceptions of progress are not that good. Like, you're progressing oh, at the yeah. same pace, and nobody's, you mm-hmm. know, doesn't seem like you're getting better. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so when exactly did you start posting your art online? Um, I'm going to have to check my Debian art for that. <laughs> <laughs> um... Ding, ding, things. I I've changed my. There, De- Debian art is a terrible place right now. <laughs> I mean, I've heard. I think I think though it's been like seven years. So seven years ago is really when you started. Really yeah, and that was right it. around the time I was starting to post fanfiction. Um, okay. on fanfiction dot uh, nice. And. Oh, well, seven years. Actually, before this account, I remember having one other one briefly. Um, and that one was uh, Kung Fu Panda with six A's at the end. <laughs> <laughs> what a legendary so... <laughs> first username. <laughs> but it was... Uh... <laughs> you really liked I, I Kung stuck... Fu Panda. I was I was clean after that. I stuck with my... <laughs> I stuck with Ding Ding after that. It's That's fine. still seriously impressive that you've had your username for that long. It it really is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how, how it happened. Yeah. So going along with when you started posting stuff, um, so when did you like start gathering a following? And when did you start to realize, hey, people are actually looking at my stuff and they like it and they follow me because i post art when did you start to see that happen sorry wait did you hear it the hear a notification noise no i didn't okay because i wasn't sure if that was my headphones or hmm i'm sure i wasn't sure if it was my headphones or not i'll just um put my computer at do not disturb (laughs) is there anything on do not disturb i mean i mean that's that's what i did i mean if you if you can't hear it's fine yeah, but, no, um, it's probably just so playing the, through your head. So the question was, what? <laughs> um, so when did you start realizing that you were garnering a following on, on social media, whether it be Tumblr or Deviant, DeviantArt hmm. or anywhere? Um, interesting. Uh, I mean, I've never really been conscious of my, let's say, my, my follow- follower count. Mm-hmm. Or watchers, as they used to be called, um, but I think at the in the in the early stages of like my being on DeviantArt, 
Yeah. I definitely was like, oh my god, like I reached another like ten followers. <laughs> um, that was like, that was like amazing to me, obviously, because um, it's like wow, these people are like actually like interacting with me and like looking at my art. So that was like way back, like like I said, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, in terms of yeah, I don't tend to get hung up on follower count. So I didn't pay much attention to it until maybe I think Tumblr overhypes follower count a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um since like, you know, there's a, recently there have been a lot of bots and like those kinds of things and people will like fade in and out and have alternate blogs. Yeah. Um But um yeah, I haven't it hasn't ever been a huge concern for me, I guess is the best way to say it. All right. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um so right right now in this point at time, what is your preferred place to post your work, whether it be your writing or your art and why? Okay. Um for art it's definitely Tumblr and Twitter. And then for writing it's archive of our own AO3. Mhm. And I yeah, that's that. Those are the three places I really post on. Um, so Instagram, I'll I'll usually do updates. Um, but yeah, I think with Tumblr and Twitter, those two kind of serve images pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, even if Tum- like Tumblr has a pretty like um, intuitive image viewing system. Yeah. Um, Twitter is not as um, intuitive, and there's a limited space for captions. Mm-hmm. But um, it's very fast. Um, it's very uh, fast-paced output. Definitely. Yeah. It's definitely tailored to somebody that a either puts out a lot of content, or you know makes content that um, goes really viral. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you never know when you post something on Twitter if it's gonna get like fifteen hundred retweets or if it's gonna get like yeah. ten likes in one retweet. It's so Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so left up to chance whether oh, yeah. you see it or not. Posting on on the internet generally is just chance. So it's That's it's difficult to go and look at look at your follower count and be like, okay, I'm expecting this number of um reblogs or likes on my uh post because I have this number of followers. Mm-hmm. That that never is going to be like a reasonable ex- expectation, mm-hmm. because like um, even if you have like a couple of thousand of fo- followers, your your post still might get thirty notes. Exactly. If it's not po- if it's not properly, um, well, it's it's kind of like it's, it might just be a designery or like markety thing to say, but time matters tagging matters and the way you present a post matters on the internet well anyone that's anyone that has put content out on the internet should understand that i don't know if anybody like everybody does but you really 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 should like on tumblr Mm -hmm. i mean i am i don't post art on tumblr I mean, mm-hmm. I just post my text posts, and for some reason, people reblog them. Um, mm. <laughs> um, Different audiences. But, yeah. So, I mean, s- some things I post get 10 notes, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. I don't, it's not really that important. And some things I post get 500 notes, and it mm-hmm. makes almost no sense. Like, and then oh, sometimes yeah. you'll, yeah. I know artists. I, you can attest to this, and you can vent about it if you want, <laughs> where you put, like, tons and tons of effort into, like, a big, big piece. Yeah. And then you post it, and it gets 50 notes, and then you throw a sketch together. Oh, yeah. And then it gets, like, 2,000. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's insane. It is absolutely insane like that. Um, it's <laughs> First of all, it kind of is left up to who the – the reblogging preferences or the sharing preferences of each of the people who view your art. Mm-hmm. And and then like it branches out obviously into like these other people who might retreat might might share your art or might not. Um 
I remember very vividly when I first came into the Yuri on Ice fandom. Um, I had, I, I was so motivated to create work for Yuri on Ice because I loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And I, I was seeing all these other artists do these cool things. So I like poured myself into all these like experimental, um, more fully uh, fleshed out pieces. And I would like keep reblogging them from myself because I'd be like, why is this only having, why, is, why does this only have like X number of notes? Mm -hmm. um, I'm really proud of it. Why isn't it getting more notes? And then you like, you crap out a very bad comic that you like did in like an hour. Uh -huh. And to, to this day, it remains my most popular post at over 20,000 like notes. And it's insane because like it took me an hour and it's not even that good. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just chance. Like you said. It, exactly. It's like, you i can't remember where i looked at this i i saw a post somewhere that so, i'm gonna be super bad at explaining this but where they made a post it was some sort of like twitter simulation or whatever and there was like no rhyme or reason to what got popular it was basically just this person with this amount of followers retweeted this and then thus that makes it more um viewed by pe mm -hmm. there are more chances for people to view it so yeah. it's just this random chance event that somebody maybe that has more followers on Tumblr per se like maybe maybe early on a blog with like 10,000 followers reblogged it and then a ton of other people reblogged it and then it just exploded mm. from there yeah um, yeah so and 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 of course people you know like that sort of content like at least that's what i've noticed where you um I you make a comic and is... it's funny and you know yeah it's a quick emotional response uh -huh. if it elicits like a positive emotion positive well, not necessarily positive because there's a lot of angst out there but um if it if it elicits a very fast emotional response and you can and the viewer can instantly connect with whatever it is they're viewing, I think that's the best way to get, like, quotation marks viral content. Yep. And then if you make, and furthermore upon that, if you um, if you make pop culture references, things like that. Follow... Oh, yeah, definitely. If you okay. compound, yeah. like, if you compound the things that you're talking about in a single post, like, if you do a redraw of a screen cap from a popular show like Parks and Rec, yep. Um, that's, That's exactly get... what I was thinking of. Oh my god! Like people <laughs> no, taking yeah, yeah. scenes from like The Office or Parks and Rec, and then making comics, yeah. and it's just like they're yeah, always yeah, funny. Like it's Nine -Nine. always funny. Yeah, it's always funny because some pe some of those people might not have seen the show, and some of those people might have. But what matters is that there's like an instantly like funny reaction because those shows are written very well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh god, I was gonna say something and then I forgot because you brought up. Uh, Parks and Rec, and then my mind <laughs> went like, <laughs> it just went elsewhere. Uh, um, so yeah, okay, I'm gonna awkwardly switch the conversation then. Cool. Um, <laughs> so, in all of your internet experience, what what is your what has been your favorite part of being in a fandom? I mean, it can be a super specific oh, or man. something super broad. I don't care. Um... Just pick something. Hmm. Actually, what I would say about being in fandoms is that right now, the Yuri on Ice fandom is probably the most fulfilling fandom I've been part of. Mm -hmm. Um, not that, not that it's, um, not that the other fandoms are terrible or anything, but I think that the the fandoms I used to be part of, or at least the ones I was really into, were mostly uh, kind of, uh, niche or old mm -hmm. because blackjack 1970 something um ace attorney early 2000s and yeah. i got into that way late uh -huh. um in those fandoms it was num number one very hard to establish a presence because of the age of the fandom yeah and in the blackjack fandom it was like you couldn't even establish one at all because there are like three fans um <laughs> 
So being in a big fandom, and especially a, a fandom that is current, mm-hmm. um, that's fulfilling. But within that experience, um, like right now I'm creating probably um, more quality content than I've created in the past, mm-hmm. which is just because of, you know, um, like development in my creation. Um, I think uh, just the most fulfilling part about being in the fandom for me is just making other people happy with what mm-hmm. I make. Um, yeah. But if you're looking for like a very specific um, instance of fulfillment or, um, fav- or, or my favorite experience, it would probably be um, just streaming art. Mm-hmm. Because like, Obviously, a lot of artists will um, put on streams of themselves drawing and maybe talk to people or put on music. Um, that's probably the most, that's my favorite part of being an artist on the internet, is just being able to stream and interact with people as I'm doing, as I'm going through my process. Because going back to the point on drawing insecurity, these people who come in are from drawing levels of varying, um, of varying skills. So it's um, it's kind of interesting to see what they think of your process, and like while they're like passionate about whatever you're drawing, mm-hmm. because you know fan art is ultimately on the internet. Fan art is what will sell the best. Yeah, that that is very 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 true. Mm-hmm. Um... Painfully so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean that that's awesome that. Um... You know, I've I've always wanted to stream something, whether it be like mm-hmm. a video game or whatever, because that inter that live interaction is super super cool. It's in, it's invaluable. Uh-huh. Like it it really changes the way you think about yourself, because I know that people are usually hesitant to do streams at first, um, because like of varying insecurities mm-hmm. and um, low self esteem. But once you start doing it, it actually is an aid to that. Mm-hmm. Um, at least that's what I've found because um, I'm quite fortunate that I haven't come up, I haven't run into much issue on the internet. Like I'm never really part of any discourse. Um, I don't have any h- haters, I would think, or at least not any vocal ones. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> um, so it's for the for the positive and um, fulfilling side of being on the internet um streaming is a pretty valuable experience yeah that sounds awesome Mm -hmm. so let's 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 go to the flip side of that oh boy um what What is is what is seriously the worst fandom experience that you've ever had that really just kind of ruined it for you Whenever I see any kind of discourse in the fandom mm-hmm. that is prolonged, that's ultimately what makes me turn off. Um, like, like there, there's something to be said for negative comments and negative discussions, but when you see a lot of negativity being um, produced and like hardly any, like, any positive content coming out of a fandom, Mm-hmm. It feels it's it really is crushing, because mm-hmm. as an example, my last fandom was Ace Attorney, um, my at least my last major fandom was Ace yeah. Attorney, and I was in I was into Ace Attorney for, at least on Tumblr I was on Ace Attorney for like two three years, wow, and I at that like, for that first for first one and a half years I didn't want to leave. But then there started being a lot of hate and uh, a lot of discussion about um, like anti ship discussions and et cetera. Um, and that's ultimately what is the worst thing about fandom is like seeing it all go to ruins because fandom is such a it's an interesting um, space mm-hmm. and it has so much potential for um, positive uh, interactions and um, discussion. But when it turns into all that negativity, that's I can't handle that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. I mean, it's always it's always awkward when people you, you always have the people that where they are in this fandom and this is like their fandom is their safe space as it were. Oh yeah. Um it's... so they want to protect what they what they have and they take arguments to places that the arguments don't need to go. Um mm. so it always, you know, and especially if it's about something that's already controversial, it just mm-hmm. makes it kind of makes matters it worse. It, 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 divi- it divides it divides fandom mm-hmm. is what it does. It um it's in a, in a in a in an ideal fandom state, I would say, um, people would kind of stay in their own lanes and let people do what they want without mm-hmm. interfering or um, arguing about it. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the main point is when people try to infringe on other people's um, passions. Mm-hmm. that's when the trouble starts yeah exactly and mm-hmm. just basically infringing on what other people enjoy and what they like yeah. about the fandom because, it's just oh know. what i was gonna say was um it's interesting that you referred to like fandom as as people's safe spaces yeah. mm-hmm. because obviously fandom is very volatile and very like it's basically like a, a constant bombardment bombarding of information mm-hmm. and um yes there are people in fandom who you may meet and become friends with like you and i mm-hmm. um there are people who will bring positive influence into your life people who make amazing content that makes make you happy mm-hmm. um but it's it's definitely not a safe space that you can rely on it's um there's safe content within fandoms there are safe people within fandoms mm-hmm. but every fandom is not solely that it is a very very fragile thing to rely on yeah um because it, it can like you've probably experienced it can go downhill very very oh very definitely quickly. always <laughs> always um yeah not that i'm i'm not trying to be pessimistic here i tend to be quite optimistic but being with the like people are complex and people change and you can't expect fandom to stay static while when people are in it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely and i mean i mean we can we could talk about the negative things about um about fandom for days because there's always some sort of problem but i really what There's... makes what makes a fandom great though is that you have these people these regular mm-hmm. ordinary people that for fun for really no personal gain whatsoever well may- maybe in some cases they do it for Not a little bit know, of personal gain say, yeah like reaffirmation about their art or their writing or something like that because i run into that too because i you know mm. i'm I participate in fandom as most people do nowadays. Yeah. You know, I create content in my free time and you do mm-hmm. you post it and you're like I need people to like this because it's going to make it's me validation. feel good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always, always. Whenever I feel down, I'm like maybe I should put something up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And yeah. even people that claim they don't, it's it's what you do as a human being because you're always Yeah, it's like it's that. always you're constantly being judged mm-hmm. and even if you don't if you claim to not care about like whatever whatever other people think of you it's always going to have a bearing on your person because that's how humans live they live um in relation to each other mm-hmm. exactly deep stuff. <laughs> so deep we're getting so deep on this podcast right now. <laughs> um yeah i was gonna make more points but yeah these going going back to what i was saying before i mean these regular people are having so much positive impact on other people and this mm. is why i created this con this contest what this podcast <laughs> because i there are so many different people that are so diverse in the space of fandom i mean there's so mm. much different content you have 
you know, live action shows and anime. Oh, and yeah. And even there, there's content that is put online, like YouTube stuff, that there are fandoms for that. For like, yeah, there's and basically anything that has fans. Mm-hmm. Anything that people can like and build off of mm-hmm. is has a fandom. Exactly. It's super interesting that way. It 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 really is, and how these people that you know are do. I mean, some people. If I'm usually talking about, you know, fanfic writers and artists, oh, yeah. really, yeah. that are doing this in their free time. You know, sometimes they're gonna have mm-hmm. a, a a patron account. You know, to help them yeah. with buying art supplies and yeah. you know, and it's it's like others supporting things. people and doing what they love and what and see and helping them make what you like to see mm-hmm. as an extension. I think what's really interesting about fandoms, though, is that there's such a broad spectrum of what you can be a fan of. Mm-hmm. Like for like for example, I stumbled. So I am uh, I I am quite. Um, an amateur anglophile <laughs> in that I, I I do a lot of looking at uh, Victorian England um, partially for the webcomic project that I'm working on with uh, Melissa. Yep. Um, and I, so I follow, so, so in that vein, I follow some blogs that post facts or like artifacts from the period. Mm-hmm. And then I stumbled upon this blog the other day, which was, um, it, I, I learned that the ship name for uh, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert is Vicbert. What? <laughs> Basically, um, there's, a, there's a new TV show. I don't know how new it is. I think the first season just ended. Um, that's, that's based around the young Queen Victoria. It's the crown, and right? No, 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 no. That's Queen Mary. Oh, sorry. No, no, um... Queen Elizabeth. Sorry. Queen, queen Elizabeth II. That's the current queen. Yeah. Um, but um, the show called Victoria was is about a young Queen Victoria and her courtship with Prince Albert and the early years of her reign. Um, and it was interesting because on one hand you have this historical aspect where these are all real people who existed like two centuries ago, or no, more like one century ago. Mm-hmm. But um, But then you also have these people who who are portraying them, and people who watch the show and go, oh man, these two characters are so compatible. Let's um, ship them, as they say in fandom. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, the, it feels odd, because these are real people, and they're real. there's real historical backing to their relationship. But then you also have this, you have them as a ship, which is kind of this... Um, this kind of ambiguous state in fandom where mm-hmm. two par- two characters or three or however many characters are put together and seen as an entity sort of yeah um, and no- that that's no matter whether there's um canon basis or um real um backing for them it it was just very interesting to see that um the Vic Bert <laughs> is a thing I, I mean, I find that super interesting too. I mean, if okay, I could take this two directions really, but I want to kind of talk about like historical figures as characters rather than the actual like historical figure. So mm. you take a very very good example of this would be Hamilton, where oh yeah, you yeah. have people in my opinion shipping the characters in the play and how they're portrayed. Um fictionally um and then you have to separate that from the actual historical entity especially if the fan like there is a history fandom it's a thing but yeah yeah in it that is, fandom of you're not shipping george washington with john adams <laughs> like that's not something that happens i feel like I, well, they're maybe called it historians is. sam it, they're called historians <laughs> yeah they're called historians <laughs> i mean maybe it happens but i like i don't see like you see Hamilton fan fiction where Alexander Hamilton is shipped with that French That's dude. Not, <laughs> oh, really not yet? Yeah, yeah. Oh, not yet. I, I'm not really, I'm not really into I, the. Hem- I don't. Fandom, I, I do not doubt that that is a thing. Well, of course it is. It's a fandom. Come on, you know the English. <laughs> exactly. It's 
It's vast. It's called a rare pair for anybody that doesn't know what that's called. It's called a <laughs> rare pair. I don't think that's. I don't. I, actually, I don't think that would be a rare pair. I don't know. Pair, I'm not in the. Let's I'm not let's in the not Hamilton let's family. not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of Hamilton fans who are gonna be really mad at us. But anyways, um, we do not mean you any harm. Discourse. Just, just, Go ship Discourse. Hamilton and Lafayette if you want to. Yeah, if you want um, to. Even though I don't care, I like I don't know anything about Hamilton. It's just yeah. it's just a thing. It's um, it's interesting though that response to like the hypothetical offense that people might take to our going. I don't know. That's that exactly people. what's <laughs> problematic about it that I had to address yeah. that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because we're so. We've been in this space for so it's long. This, it's this social e- etiquette in fandom. Yeah, exactly. Like, no offense yeah. to you. You could do that. I mean, I'm not yeah. trying to offend you. It, it's because we've seen it happen yeah. before where people it's are like saying It's like, all I'm saying. <laughs> full offense, but this is trash. Um, <laughs> that's yeah, kind of what happens. It varies. It varies. Yeah. Um, mm. And the other direction I was going to take that conversation is building fiction upon fiction where you oh, kind of boy. have you have these let's the, what what fandom can i do as an example of this i i could just pick i don't have to have an example because you can do literally a random one. just fill in the blank with any characters you want mm-hmm. um where you have this this um in the ship you have them in most cases romantically and whispers sexually um <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it happens. Come on. Everybody knows that. Uh, um, Sam. What? <laughs> continue, um, continue. Um, where you have these people, whether, like you said, based in canon or not, um, and you basically make something out of nothing just because mm-hmm. people... <sighs> it's... It's strange because people get satisfaction from it because they, in their mind, yeah. they're like, these people, if hypothetically they were in a relationship, I could see it working. And I like the dynamics mm-hmm. between these two characters. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take this and run with it. Yeah. And some people don't understand that, which mm-hmm. I guess is understandable in a way. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, I just find it interesting that it's fiction upon fiction. Like, and everybody yeah, and... subconsciously knows in their mind that I'm doing this. It's fiction. I know it's not an actual thing. Yeah, but, but then you I'm also do have. It I think looking at the specific example of uh, types of fan fiction, you have fan fiction that runs alongside canon. Um, it explains events within canon and like maybe um, goes deeper into the the whatever is going on inside mm-hmm. the story yeah. and then you have kind of compliant fiction which is placed generally inside canon but not quite in the events described and then you have maybe post canon or pre canon which is before and after the main storyline yep. and then you have like completely out there um stories alternate universes mm-hmm. um, which are so vastly different from or actually, sometimes they're quite similar to canon, but maybe there's a small change, or maybe it's actually in a completely different world. <laughs> and that's like, that's kind of the weirdest thing because you're taking a work of fiction and like stretching it so far. Like maybe maybe the the character's com- like personalities completely change, but the the appeal of fan fiction and fan media, I think, is because. Um, Fans have this emotional attachment to the characters and story already, mm-hmm. and that allows for more exploration um, on fan on creators' parts um, to go. Okay, what if this character was a barista, or <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if this character was a high a grand wizard? In, I don't know this like fantasy world. Uh-huh. Um, that's just. That's very interesting to me. It's it's totally interesting because mm-hmm. then you go, you go into places where where does it become your own thing, and where mm-hmm. is it just when uh, I didn't phrase that correctly. When <laughs> when is it just these same characters that have their same personalities 
set in the canon, but this little thing has changed, so it's pretty much still the same story, but you put a little bit of a spin on it where oh, it it's like still it's like those the... it's, it's like those AUs where it's like um everything is the same except this character doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's I yeah. think that's the most changed common ending kind of fix. Yeah. Like, yeah. Changed ending, um sometimes they're like, oh what if their roles were totally reversed or what if they were soulmates? Um a lot of fan a lot of uh Fan work is based around ships and romantic relations, which is interesting, but it, that's yeah. another topic. Totally. <laughs> um, oh, gosh, what I was what was I going to say? Um, I forgot, so we're just going to move on. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, all in all, how has producing content for a fandom really affected you? Has it affected you? Well, in what ways has it affected you positively and what ways do you think has it had negative effects? Mm, okay. I've been feeling this topic very, like, intensely for the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the positive benefits, I talked about this a little bit um, earlier, but the positive benefits of being in a fandom where you're inundated with all of this other fan art and created by artists who are into the same things as you are is you get to have exposure to um all that art and therefore also feel inspired or motivated to do more of your own art so um that's one positive factor the other positive factor is um feedback like very simply feedback is what fandom runs on and um it's it's very very um motivating for artists to receive feedback on work because in a, in another setting you might not get feedback specific to um, what is portrayed like in an art class you might get something like oh the composition of this piece or like the color scheme of this piece etc but yep. in fandom you get feedback that's like oh my god i can't believe you added this detail about this character into this piece mm -hmm. and that's like a very very personal specific thing to have noticed and um be recognized for um so yeah feedback is super important mm -hmm. um and then uh i think again with the improvement that's probably the biggest thing that th those two factors work together in order to like help artists progress within a digital space yeah yeah um, because when I when I first started posting a lot on Tumblr, like I, I had had a Tumblr since two thousand nine, and um, I was a, a filthy casual, uh, <laughs> reblogging stuff, um, kind of lurking. Um, and when I in two thousand fourteen, when I really started posting art for um, Ace Attorney, that's when I saw my art progress like really soar because mm -hmm. I was getting feedback and I was creating art in response. So it's this this constant dialogue between artists and a fandom or a fan following um, that really increases that um, productivity. And then um, on the negative side, um, there are so many artists in the fandom that oftentimes you're intimidated by uh, other people's content. Mm -hmm. Like... Um, this is this was actually a little bit less prominent in the Ace Attorney fandom where I was for a very long time, um, because it was an old fandom and all of the works that I saw were actually created like years ago. I wasn't really directly affected by people creating things alongside the work I was creating. Mm -hmm. But in the fandom, a popular sports anime fandom like Yuri on Ice, where there are so many talented amazing fans who are creating everything from like um animations to um real realistic paintings to um comics of this uh, for this fandom um it gets to be very intimidating for people who might not be who might not view themselves as um talented or skilled as these other artists and creators yeah 
yeah, that's... And I've been feeling that a lot recently. Um, mm -hmm. It's not... And, like, that, that can hit anyone at any level. Um, I know people who want to draw more stylized. Um, and they can do an amazing job with a realistic um, drawing. But they they feel insecure because their drawing style is simply different. Yeah. Um, on the on the on the other hand, um, you can be intimidated by a person's um, knack for composition, uh, because that's the thing about posting art on it, on the internet. Even if you're not maybe professionally trained, um, there's still like some sort of sense as an artist that this person's work is different than yours in X Y Z ways. Mm -hmm. and you'll you'll find things that are better or worse about them yeah yeah it's it's like a it's like a group critique on steroids except it's all <laughs> happening inside your own head yeah yeah exactly i mean <laughs> w if you if you take a fandom like yuri on ice there it has attracted so many talented so, artists so many <laughs> I mean, it's even more, like, I don't even know how it happened, because you see so much of this amazing it's, art it's just unexpected. circulating It's around. unexpected. Yeah, because as in any community, there are corners of the internet where you start, and then you kind of, it, they bleed together, especially on sites like Twitter or Tumblr, where c content is constantly shared. Um and it's it's actually put me in touch with a like a ton of amazing people and even people who i admired in the past for completely different works but who have come together in this fandom and who i now interact with mhm mm it it really has kind of centered a lot of people mm -hmm. um i mean in terms of their art and you know things of that nature it's brought a oh, lot yeah. of people from a lot of different backgrounds together mm -hmm. and that's what you know i mean if you're talking about the anime fandom which is what we're talking about right now um mm -hmm. you have once in a while a show that comes around that kind of centers people that are fans of anime together whether that mm -hmm. be like a show like haikyuu that is has many different um um features that are appealing to many different people and then you have mm -hmm. you're on ice which is another sports anime that has a ton of different aspects to it i would say even mm -hmm. more so than haikyuu that make it appealing um, yeah i think um what like many people in the fandom are actually not maybe initially anime fans but they come for the representation mm -hmm. yeah so it's that it's too, like that's... a it's the there's a there's a very broad net that's cast with Yuri on Ice mm -hmm. that that Haikyuu may not have. I mean, you have a you have figure skating, which probably not probably it did have a fandom before Yuri on Ice came around, but then it's bringing like anime fans into the figure skating fandom and like figure skating fans into the anime fandom into Yuri on Ice, and mm -hmm. then you have that kind of crossing of communities. Of fandoms yeah. that I think can Super happen if there is, you know, a I must said masterwork. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have like this big, this big thing that comes along that just kind of attracts people from all over the place. Yeah, like a magnet. <laughs> yeah, like like a magnet, a magnet series, and mm -hmm. you know, in anime you can point to really really big shows like Full Metal Alchemist and Attack on Titan. And mm -hmm. all those big, big popular ones that, you know, attract a huge audience. So I find that but super think, interesting as well. Yeah, but it's also like what whatever circumstances are happening in the real world. Like, um, obviously the world was a little, maybe seemed a little bit simpler um, before 2016. Mm -hmm. let's say <laughs> but um that was subtle in America, I, I liked it uh, yeah <laughs> um but because I think it's always a case of right place and right time yeah um when you look at Yuri on, Yuri on Ice 2016 was one of the most um tumultuous years for like LGBT rights and um just civil rights in general <laughs> yeah and then 
you have the series that comes along with this kind of positive representation of a gay couple in Japanese media. And that's why people suddenly latched onto it because it elicited a response that was, that gave them hope Mm -hmm. after all of the American election. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that's a huge, I'm glad you brought that up because that is a huge, a huge point that you can Mm -hmm. have a medium like anime that can literally change people's lives and their perspectives. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so, definitely. And then fandom is the place where people come and discuss it and talk about it and then it mm-hmm. you know affects them even more. So Yeah. It's it's awesome. It's great. Yeah. It's it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah. I'm I probably already know the answer to this, but what is the what is your favorite fandom you've ever been a part of? Hmm. Well, <laughs> I mean, in terms of, well, I, I have favorites for different reasons. Yeah. But as an overall, obviously, like I mentioned this earlier, Yuri on Ice is my current favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, but just the experiences that I've had in previous fandoms definitely shaped me as a person. Yeah. Um, so there are different things I'm, I find favorites for you know Mm -hmm. definitely um i mean you have yuri on ice is for the most part a really really positive fandom to be a part of yeah Um, it's i would say it's more wholesome quotation marks than other fandoms mm -hmm. definitely i mean despite and that goes along with it being even Um, though it hasn't been airing for four months now it's like usually you have like a month or two after like a season ends a a slow slow slide yeah down yuri and ice has not done that whatsoever it just keeps going i think it's done a little bit of that but because um there's constant content being put out by the by like the the yuri on ice team um that's what helps fuel it because um First of all, they kind of um, obviously. I think, in terms of media, uh, see, I'm a, I'm an av- I, I'm, I, I want to go into advertising, so I kind of look for trends. Um, <laughs> yeah. The the thing with the promotion of Japanese media is that they're more likely to be continuous about it. Mm-hmm. Like when you look at U.S. TV shows, they often skimp on things like um more official art or more official images um merchandise etc um those things are kind of secondary to the the show or the movie itself yeah and then you look at japanese um media and you have not only do you have the show itself but you have all of these varied products that cater to fans of the show like in particular yuri Yuri on ice um kind of almost every wednesday there's news about whatever the team is doing and possibly announcements about merchandise or events or new official art in magazines Mm -hmm. um the magazines especially are important because they promote they keep on promoting um the show Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the key difference between the way Western media treats media and then Japanese media treating Japanese media is mm-hmm. that the the kind of the breadth of its promotions is vastly different. Yeah. Um yeah. That that was that was a good answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lots of good answers tonight. Yeah. Um so in your like in your experience with fandom um have you i this this question is so dumb now that i look at it like do you have any friends that you've made being in a fandom and how close you are to them obviously i know this answer but you know (laughs) um well i obviously have made friends in fandom Mm -hmm. one example being you yeah um it's 
Yeah, um, I definitely have quite a few friends that I've met through fandom. Um, these friends, like, come in and come out of my life. Uh, and for the most part, like, I managed to find pretty great people in fandom because my, my interests often align with people's interests who um, are nice people. Mm-hmm. Their interests are not nice people. The, you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it really varies in closeness because I've had friends where I talk to them every day for maybe like three months and then we kind of like slip from each other's worlds and we see them on social media like once every week or something. Yep. Um, that's just the way the internet is. And I've even had people like completely, completely disappear on me, mm-hmm. which is sad. Yeah. Um, that's also the part of the, an- the anonymity of the internet is that those things happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I also have friends who I may, I may know in real life or maybe have reconnected with um, online. Which is kind of cool, but also a little bit creepy, considering the kind of content that I post. Yeah. Um, Because one day I got an ask, um, which said, I kid you not, um, they were like, hey, I'm a friend of a friend. And this is a non-ask. And they said, just saying, I like your art, and um, I don't think you know me, but yeah. And... (laughs) And yeah. the, the, the nature of the internet is oftentimes your internet persona is not known to those in real life. Uh-huh. Um, so it's, it's very, very interesting when those two worlds collide because I had a moment of panic going, oh god, what did, who is this person? <laughs> like, how, how do they know? <laughs> how do they know me? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, has because to be they, super odd. I never got any other explanation. I just got this random ask. I'm a friend of a friend. Yeah. <laughs> so they're friends with somebody that you know, but you don't know them. Yes. It's, and, okay. And I like, I I probably spent like an hour thinking about it, going, oh god, whose friends of friends do I know? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then you have, you know, they probably mentioned, like, Oh, offhand. I found it. I found it. Wait. <laughs> I found the ask. Um, it says, friend of a friend here. We've maybe talked a couple of times in parentheses. Tumblr recommended I follow you. And it was this weird moment of, I actually know that person. Anyway, I love all your dogs and you're a good artist. Which is, it's a nice message. But yeah, it it's is. also like, how did, do, do our, do our, our interests align so much that, tumblr recommended i follow you that's so weird it's very very strange it's <laughs> that's kind of amazing though too it is amazing it is amazing but i'm also kind of wondering why didn't you just talk to me <laughs> <laughs> i mean surely there must have been another way to for you oh my to gosh can you, that. can you imagine if you're like because you've you've posted selfies online, right? You've posted like just on a Twitter, few. just a few. Um, some on Tumblr too, but I've I take like one selfie a year. So <laughs> the same. That's mm-hmm. what, well, Snapchat. I, Snapchat doesn't count. I don't uh, even do Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, I know. I send you stuff, and then you open them, and then you don't respond because you're great. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, but it'd be super weird if you like, um went to a place like let's say you went to like an art museum or something and somebody Mm -hmm. came up to you and said oh my gosh you're you're ink thing i know your art and then you'll be like (laughs) oh no what have you seen (laughs) okay see that's that's an interesting thing because i do think about that a lot um back in um when was it i think it was march yeah it was march um, I went to see Johnny Weir uh, skate at Bryant Park in mm-hmm. New York, and I went with a, like two friends who know Yuri on Ice, and we just saw so many cosplayers. Yep. Like there were so many people cosplaying as Victor and Yuri because Johnny Weir obviously has talked about Yuri on Ice and has watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been very vocal about that. Yes. And I was kind of sitting there going, "Oh God." These people might have seen my art. 
<laughs> because that's the surreal thing when you exactly. when you're exposed to like fans in real life that's the kind of response you think about like it's like oh god they're there yeah like these people might know me but you're also too scared to say anything exactly yeah because it's fandom and you're like maybe they, what if they think i'm a weirdo in real life <laughs> it's the other like the other day i went to anime club at my university on on friday and we were like sitting there and talking about di- like different like anime trope things um and this person was like how do you know that's this much about x thing um and i said well i I have a I have a Tumblr blog, and they were like, "Really? You look like such a respectable member of society." Oh my god! Because no. <laughs> because in real life, I don't often wear my anime shirts out. I don't present myself no, I as don't an ultra nerd. No, yeah. So it's super. <laughs> it's I laugh for two minutes. Um, <laughs> that is so that's pretty funny, but me. it's also like a backhanded co- comment, almost like. Yeah. You have a Tumblr? I mean, like, what? I, I'm censoring myself a lot because the actual nature of the topic was a little bit risque. Yeah, but, um, yeah it's uh, it's interesting. Especially since that was a space where it, it's anime club. Like, even inside a club dedicated to anime, people would be like, wait, but you don't look like a fan. Yeah. It's... It's it's bizarre. Well, it goes into as well where you can not everybody that watches something and enjoys or reads something and enjoys it is going to participate in a fandom. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean that like it's like the, the casuals. The, yeah, the the filthy <laughs> casuals as you yeah. said before. Um <laughs> Like, I do that with tons of stuff, tons of anime, too, where oh, I yeah, watch it, definitely. I enjoy it, I don't it's like, okay, pursue I anything you. further. Like, mm-hmm. like I seriously enjoyed um, Your Lion April, but I oh, don't, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. well, that fandom's dead. I'm sorry, it's dead. <laughs> it's It came out in 2011, that was six years ago, okay? Mm-hmm, so... Mm-hmm. But I mean, there there's still people talking about it, and I will add to that conversation. But like, I'm not. It's not something that I. Really there's pursue. varying degrees yeah. of fan participation, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. And that sometimes you forget that when you're living in like in this space of fandom where everybody is pretty much equally as invested in this thing as you are, and then you forget that there are other people that don't feel the same way that you do about yeah. this thing yeah and that's also one of the negative things about it sorry i talked over you but no it's okay um, I, I didn't really have anything <laughs> um th- that's one of the negative things about it too is you're caught in this bubble and then you you know you stay in this bubble and then you think this certain way and then you go and other people think a different way and you're like oh yeah like this isn't other people have different perspectives about this thing that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And that's okay, believe it or not. Yeah, of course, it's okay. <laughs> believe it or not, it yeah. is fine. It's not like zero to zero or a hundred. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no black and white in terms of passion for a subject. And obviously, passion will wane. You can't be like, oh, like, you're either a fan or you're not. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, rolling to the to the last question that I have for you. Mm-hmm. Um, so you said you haven't really ran into that much negativity that has affected you personally, but when you do, because I know you do sometimes, because everybody mm-hmm. does. Yeah. At one point or another. Um, mm-hmm. how do you deal with the negativity? Like, what have your what is your strategies? What okay. are your strategies? I think this largely depends on what my um, prevailing mood is um, whenever I encounter the negativity. Because um, at times when I'm feeling good about myself, I'm usually quite self-confident. Um, when I see a negativity of that kind, it doesn't tend to bring me down too much. Um, so generally, either I issue a witty response or I just ignore it. 
and more often I will ignore it mm-hmm. because there's no sense in, in uh, provoking that kind of uh, hate speech. Um, but when my mood is low, as it has been for the, uh, maybe the past few weeks, mm-hmm. it's very it's it's hurtful, obviously, to get that kind of uh, feedback. And um, it I think it honestly coping depends on whether the other party is pushing uh, is or is aggressive or is um, actively um, trying to provoke you. Yeah. Um, because in that case, it gets ten times more stressful. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's more stressful when you know your intrusive thoughts come around. But um, I think the best way I can co- the best way I cope with this kind of thing is simply um, reasoning out the the reasons why it might have happened and um, whether there's legitimacy to the comments or not. Because mm-hmm. that's that's the way I think at least is quite logically. Yeah. So. I'll take something and go, let's break this down. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so I'll usually go offline for a little bit or like talk it through in an online chat um, with friends and try to just make sense of it. Because sometimes there is no sense. And when there's no sense, then either you're like, okay, this doesn't have any real impact on what I'm doing. So let's just let it slide mm-hmm. or you can really start over analyzing it and like going why are people so cruel um because that's what happens sometimes like you just your faith in humanity might wane when you're on the internet and that <laughs> just happens it does um, happen that's, it does it true. does um so it's basically just give yourself a reality check mm-hmm. because of course if you if if um you come across negativity and it's um it, it either is personal or not personal um yeah the best way is just to get a reality check i think um going back to the reason why i like the negative fandom experience i i described with mm-hmm. ace attorney fandom um i think that the way i coped was distancing myself really yeah. because it's not like the actual comments are being made um, against me or to me. Um, it's just a way, just th- the thing about the internet is that you're not trapped there. Yeah. You can really just go and come and go as you, as you please. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes people forget that. Yeah. That's, that's definitely the point that I was going to make. If you didn't make it is that you, when you're part of a fandom, if you have the right, if there is stuff happening in that fandom and you're not getting enjoyment out of it anymore, you have no obligation to keep participating because, yeah. you know, it's your choice to participate. You don't have an obligation. And that goes for content creators, too. You know, mm-hmm. if you're not having fun with it anymore, don't do it, even though definitely if yeah. you've garnered a following at all, what how small it may be. Um, you have a right to your own happiness, so you can yeah. pull out if you want to. Yeah, I think that's one reason why some people create like ten thousand usernames on the internet. It's because they feel the need to separate themselves from a negative space. Yeah. Um, I haven't felt the need to do that, but sometimes, um, like people's fandom past do come up to haunt them, which is crazy to think that fandom is that old of an institution Uh um like uh it's like when you when if you've kept the same like ao3 account for ages and you suddenly get a comment on a fic you wrote for a different fandom that you were into like three years ago yeah and you're going oh i'm sorry yeah it's been years who who (laughs) scrolled that far down the tag to find my fic yeah exactly same with tumblr Mm-hmm. If a post gets revived, you're like, oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the worst. It's the absolute worst. But the fact, is, the fact of the matter is, it's just 
do you want to be associated with that past or not? And do you want to, like, sometimes you do get reminded and you get bad memories coming back. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's generally, that's just the way everything is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I seriously enjoyed this conversation. I think yeah, this was, was yeah, it was super productive and super, uh, um, productive is not the word. It was super insightful <laughs> And yeah. yeah, it it was a fun time. I really like doing this with you. Thanks yeah, again yeah, for for coming on on short notice. No problem. I'm yeah. gonna go do homework now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I should probably do that too. But you know, it's okay. We All got right. it. And I hope the I hope the recording came out okay. <laughs> yeah, I hope yeah. so too. I'm about to uh, listen to it. So yeah, thanks again. Yeah, no problem. See you later. <laughs>